Farmman Rose here, making a quick little short video of some good, very good news. I'm not going to get to the point right now, but uh, I'm going to start off with the Nitro Cadet. I'm on it today. Flight is really good. About 10, maybe 15 minutes, not even half a tank burned. That's it in there. I want to do a shout out to Jeff's Custom RC. Thank you for the book. I'm going to use this to repaint the MiG-17 in the wintertime. And once I get a hold of the F-22, Mirage, or another MiG, or a Suplane, or, or the A-10. Most likely the A-10. I'm definitely getting that thing, the 2080s. That would be really nice to get. Just get base gray and then paint it up. So anyway, you're all wondering why all the planes are in my car. Well, I'm going flying tomorrow again. And you think I'd just put a airplane in here and not fly it? Well, this one right here is flying tomorrow. I got the control surfaces checked out, everything. The servo linches are great. Servo rods are awesome. Got that done. I, I listened to Jeff Customs RC about uh, trimming off the aileron servo rods. Trimmed about a, about a quarter inch or so. So I trimmed that off with my Dremel. And it seemed to work pretty good. And I got the gear door. The gear door isn't 100%. But you can see it. It's closed in there. I don't know if you can see on the other side. But that door there was actually warped when I got it. So I used a cigarette lighter to uh, try and try my best to make it as flat and flush as I can. I still got to do some other things. I got, I got tape in here. I got to tape up the wires underneath the wing. But this side's okay. It's got lots of power. I tested everything out. I, I'm able to get my 6,000 milliamp 6L75C tourniquet graphene panther pack in there. Very, very tight. I got the telemetry in there. For, I got for airspeed. I got temperature. I don't have battery, uh, flight pack voltage in there set up yet. That's the next thing. And then I got some receivers exposed. I wasn't really hoping to put this one up here. Well, I might get an extension wire and mount that one at the back of the bottom of the fuselage. But I got one on the top, on a little bit on the side. That's only because the antenna coming from the receiver, there's two. One is longer, one is shorter. The long one is on this side. I don't know if you can see it. I got it taped down. And then the other remote receiver that came with the 9 channel receiver I got from, from Horizon Hobby is on the bottom there. I just got that taped down, and that goes out the sides too. And then the reason why I got this one on a little bit of an angle is that this antenna on the left side of the receiver, I get full range out of this side here, and then a little bit over on the other side. So when I'm going straight up, I'm definitely going to have uh, range from or connectivity from this receiver and the one on the other side, and then. The second little one on the receiver itself. I don't know if you can see it, but it's down way back in there. I don't know if you can see in there, but it's somewhere in that little hole there. That hose is for the pedal tube. So it's right back in there somewhere. So that way you, if you'll, uh, you'll get it if it's coming straight at you or whatever, right? And then the one at the bottom is when it's inverted... No, an inverted uh, when it's going up ahead of you. So yeah, I got full range on this baby now. Next project is get a run cam and a mount in the front here. I think Deuces did that. Deuces Wild or Rufins? I don't. I'm not sure. I think someone did it with with their Meg 17. It looked really really nice. Yeah, I really want to get a run cam. I'm more interested in flying than actually recording. And of course, I got the L39. I still got to order a new canopy that came off uh, at a event I was at back in July. So I got to fix that. Get an O-ring like Skip did. He put a Skip built. He put an O-ring around the canopy so that it's airtight. I still got to do that. Find an O-ring for it. And then uh, what I did today is I just. 
took my little drill bit and my drill and drilled a small hole in the side of the fuselage there by the intake just so that one of the antennas can can be visible from the outside rather than both of them being on the inside because I had one flight where where it lost range it lost connection for a, almost a few seconds and I gained it back before it hit the ground and I saved it that was pretty scary so I'll be flying this baby tomorrow and probably do two or three flights on this is a, but i only have one pack for it that's the only issue and each and every and a pack takes about an hour to charge anyway this thing is really nice it does have some damage on it already that's just for me handling it and and stuff so it's got some holes and stuff there but that'll be fixed up when i paint when i repaint it and it's same around the camp i gotta get vinyl or something Final tape or whatever just to seal the inside like I did on the 150 and on the L39. I don't know if you can see the tape there. But. Yeah, this jet took me two full days now to settle up. It took me almost a day to build it and it took me about a full afternoon or more to, uh, to do the setting up on the servos and programming everything. So I got a new car, got a Nissan Rogue. You go to the dollar store, if you want more room in your vehicle, guys, these are shower bars or whatever for your curtains. You get the ones that uh, that twist and extend, and then there's a little bit of spring in them so that they can press, and then they tighten up. They're perfect for RC airplanes. And just grab poo noodles, too, from dollar store or Dollarama, or whatever, wherever you go, like the bulk barn, whatever you guys have in the States, for a small little craft, or whatever store, right, I would have this, but yeah, it's very nice, I'm able to even get, like, probably a few more jets, I can probably fit an A-10 in here if I wanted to, or an F-14, I'm going to be able to fit my, my E-Flight F-16, my Viper can also get in here, I can probably fit my Cessna 152 in here, this rogue got a lot of room and it's really nice 60 40 split it already comes with two rack systems one on the bottom one on the top and then it's got three spots where you can put them you can put them on the bottom like there a little bit higher or all the way up so so yeah jeff thank you for the book man i really do like it oh and thanks so much for supporting my channel Jeff, Jeff's customer, C. Very nice, guys. Very nice book that he's, he gave me. So, this is probably the paint scheme I'm going to go with for the MiG-17. Not fully chrome, but mostly chrome from the mid fuselage to the bottom. And then red, more red around it, and then some black. Make it look like that MiG-15 or that ever MiG-17 I saw at the Jet Rally. But thank you guys for supporting my channel. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers by by 20, 2021. If I get up to 500 before 2020, which is a long ways away, the book here that Jeff gave me, I'm probably going to give that away as soon as I'm done with it. Or sometime next year. And then I'll be giving away my F-16 too. After 50 flights with it. But before I cut the video out. I'm going to shut the door. Take it down to my hanger. Uh Batteries charging. There's a big 17 box. <laughs> uh, I like these high tech chargers. They ain't fast chargers, but they do charge a battery. A six cell in less than an hour or so. I can charge six now at a time. Charging packs up for the F 16. 2200 milliamp Gen Zace four cell. There it is.